Hey everyone, this is Dave from Colossal Fossils in central Wisconsin. We are a nonprofit organization and we specialize in natural history, things like dinosaurs, ice age mammals, fossilized fish, and the like. Today's short little educational talk, we're going to talk about a very unique predator prey relationship from the Badlands of South Dakota. Now, these two specimens that I have right here are about 30 million years old, plus or minus. We have our little uh, herbivore, or plant eater, and our carnivore, or meat eater. Now, our plant eater is called an oreodont. Now, oreodont, we're gonna break that up into their root words. Now, oreo may sound familiar, but it has nothing to do with the delicious cookie. Oreo actually means mountain, and dant may sound like don, den, dentist. That's right. All has to do with teeth. So the name oreodont literally translates to mountain tooth, because when you look at these things, they resemble little miniature mountain ranges. Oreodonts are a type of hoof mammal called an artiodactyl. Now, today we have two different types of hoof mammals. There are the perissodactyls, things like horses, zebras, tapirs, and rhinos. And then we have the artiodactyls, which are the even-toed mammals. All right, now some examples of artiodactyls today would be the bison, like the one on the poster behind me, as well as hmm, deer, goats, pigs, things like that. Now, a little oreodont was an artiodactyl, and it kind of resembled a mix of all of these things. Now, they say that they lived about 40 million years ago, you know, first appearing in the fossil record, and then going extinct around 5 million years ago. Oreodonts were small little mammals. They weren't very big, maybe the size of a small goat. Now, we think that they were herd animals because they were looking out for predators like that one right there. This guy is called Hoplophonius, and when we look at its root words, it means the armed murderer. And you can totally see how it got that name. It has these long, sharp canine teeth, very similar to that of a modern uh, clouded leopard or an extinct Smilodon or saber-toothed cat, right? Now, Hoplophonius may look like a saber-toothed cat, but believe it or not, it is not at all related to those types of animals. In fact, this thing isn't even a cat. It's from an extinct group of predators called the Nimravids that, again, lived all over the world, you know, anywhere from, you know, 20, 30, 40 million years ago until the true cats came into the uh, family tree of life and basically outcompeted, outsmarted all of these things, and the Nimravids went extinct. Same goes for this one right here, Hoplophonius. The one here, again, is about 30 million years old, plus or minus, and it came from the Badlands of South Dakota. Hoplophonius was a massive animal or predator, okay? In fact, fully grown some species got to around 150 pounds. Now, this one was almost fully grown, Hoplophonius primavis, and you could compare them to a modern mountain lion in size. Now, these were not the largest predators of the Badlands 30 million years ago. No, we think their hunting method was very similar to that of a leopard. So if we look at African leopards, they hunt way up in the tops of the trees and jump down on their prey. And then, once it dispatched its prey, it would carry it back up into the tree to protect itself and its food from other predators like the Archaeotherium, also known as Hellpig, also known as the Were-Hippo. Again, these two animals right here created a very cool predator-prey relationship. They were of similar size, so it's very safe to assume that something like Hoplophonius was jumping out of the trees 30 million years ago and landing on these things. Now, this skull is very unique because what we don't have is, you know, the two halves of the skull put together. We have the thing split open. So you can see all the detail and even better, we're going to take a close look at the teeth. Now, looking at this up close, what we have here is the bottom jaw, or the mandible. And again, look at those teeth. Remember, oreodont means mountain tooth. Can you see 
how these kind of look like little mountains. Isn't that cool? All right, and then when we turn it around, we can see that this is the top half of the skull. You can see its orbit or eye socket right there. And again, some really neat mountainous teeth. Now this one has a lot of its uh, front teeth broken off. Not all fossils are perfect when they come out of the ground, right? But let's flip that over. You can see what this thing would have looked like 30 million years ago. 